Williamsburg Tribune Review reported that several witnesses said that the fiery object crashed into a wooded ravine in western Pennsylvania, near the hamlet of Kecksburg. Some residents, including William Beulah Bush, claimed to have seen the object that fell into the ravine. I went up there, and I looked at it, and I couldn't figure out what it was. It looked like an acorn to me, but yet it was a little longer. I'd say about as big as a Volkswagen, maybe a little bit longer than a Volkswagen, you know. <laughs> and you could get at least two or three men in it. I mean, it's set maybe too comfortable. According to published accounts, military personnel cordoned off the area. Some witnesses claimed the object was taken away on a flatbed truck. Saw this flatbed truck come out of the woods with this object on it. And I could see it. It was copperish looking. It had the hieroglyphics around the bottom of it, which was like a bumper shape, you know, it was rounded off. Like an acorn sitting on maybe a tower, you know, a big round tower. However, the military claimed that nothing was found in the woods that night. This was in line with the official explanation. Officially, it had now been declared that people had been mistaken. Nothing had fallen into the woods. People had seen a bright meteor in the sky, and that's how the report officially is as of today. But several witnesses claim to have seen the object, and their descriptions are remarkably consistent. What they describe basically is a large metallic acorn-shaped object that is approximately 10 to 12 feet or more in length and about 8 to 10 feet or so in diameter, semi-buried in the ground. Could this strange object, allegedly seen by dozens of people, have been a downed spacecraft? One of the most common explanations for the Kecksburg event has been the theory that it was Cosmos 96, which was a Russian spacecraft that was designed to land on the planet Venus. And during its mission, there was a, a problem and it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. The Cosmos 96 lander, however, fell to Earth more than 12 hours before the Kecksburg object. Cosmos 96 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at about 3.18 a.m. that same date in Canada. Now, the event in Kecksburg happened about 4.47 in the afternoon. So, that being the case, we have to wonder more and more what exactly it was that may have fallen. Some have theorized that object might have been the engine or nacelle from an A-12 or SR-71 Blackbird, which had disintegrated during a test flight. The Unsolved History team decided to perform an experiment. First, we asked graphic designer Patrick Martin to prepare some renditions of various types of space debris, as if they had crashed into the ravine. In one drawing, he used the engine housing from an SR-71 as the object. In another, he substituted the image of the landing module from the Cosmos 96. Then, historian-in-residence Daniel Martinez showed the artist's renditions to some of the Kecksburg eyewitnesses. So I'm going to just give you these. I'm going to give you one by one, and you take as much time as you want to look at them and say it either looked like this or it didn't look like this. First, Daniel shows William Beulah Bush some renditions of an SR-71 engine housing. I one here for you. No. No. Here's another. No. Then he shows him the rendition of an SR-71 engine itself. Uh, this is pretty close here. This didn't have the writing on the back. Okay. A little similar, but not exactly. Yeah, this, it don't, it, it's not in a point like, you know. Now, this, this year is a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. Next, Daniel showed the artist's renditions to witness Jerry Betters. I'm going to lay these artist impressions in front of you. I want you to look at them as long as you like and tell me what you see. No. Okay. Another one for you here. Closer. Closer? Okay, we'll put that in the closer pile. Here's another. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Okay, 
that's in the that, that's it. If it was if it was upright, that would be it. That's pretty damn close, you know. Our eyewitness picked the Soviet space capsule as being the best match for the object he saw on the back of the flatbed truck in 1965. This would seem to eliminate the likelihood that the Kecksburg object was the engine from a Blackbird. I have a part of a Blackbird to have crashed in Pennsylvania. Uh, I have to say, no, there's no way it could happen. But after looking at the, at the illustrations, is it part of a satellite? Is it a part of an extraterrestrial uh, object? Very possible. But if it was a Soviet spacecraft, where would it have been taken? If some foreign aircraft, let's say a Soviet aircraft, had flown into the uh, United States and landed normally there, then it would be taken to a place like Area 51 for analysis and tests, because being a remote location, it would be an ideal place to test that aircraft. Four decades have passed, and the local residents still debate what, if anything, fell near Kecksburg that day. Now, of course, as a researcher, I'm continuing to look into the possibility that it could be other man-made projects that we don't have any knowledge of at this point. But we cannot eliminate the possibility that this object could be of extraterrestrial origin. We may never know the truth about the Kecksburg UFO, whether it was indeed a meteorite, a Soviet space probe, an SR-71 engine, an experimental military airplane, or, unlikely as it may seem, an alien spacecraft. Next on Unsolved History, the truth about alien UFOs at Groom Lake. On cloaking device system to uh, make aircraft uh, more invisible to the human eye. One way you can make an aircraft less easy to spot with the naked eye is to coat it with a, an electrochromatic kind of polymer, which effectively, when coupled to sensors, can tell the aircraft uh, what background it's flying against. So if you're on the ground and looking up, the sensors on the aircraft would register that the aeroplane is flying against a blue sky background. And so it will signal to the polymers below the aircraft that they should mimic the sky. So effectively what you're seeing is a chameleon-like thing that is flying through the air, shimmering a little like uh, the Predator in that movie. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. yeah, it does. It looks like it's floating. It's changing shape. But what about the rumors of alien spacecraft being tested at Area 51? In recent years, Bob Lazar, the man who claimed to have worked at a location near Area 51, has withdrawn from public life. His stories about having reverse-engineered alien spacecraft have largely been dismissed by government officials and the mainstream media. Lazar's credibility was broken down pretty bad. He never worked up there. He never worked for Los Alamos or in, in any of the labs in New Mexico. He may have been up there, but he didn't work for the government. He worked for maybe for a private contractor. But no one up there at Area 51 or any place in the labs acknowledges that any spaceship really existed. But some still defend Lazar's credibility. The question is, are there alien craft or alien beings at Area 51? Uh, the answer to that is no. But if you believe Bob Lazar, which I do, then there are alien spacecraft and possibly alien beings at the S-4 location, which is the southwest corner of the Papoose Range. In August 1997, after decades of denials, the CIA made a shocking admission thousands of UFOs reported by eyewitnesses were actually covert test and reconnaissance flights. UFOs are a very handy smokescreen if you want to hide top secret stuff behind them. And you don't get anywhere more top secret than Area 51. So the legends that surround Area 51 are going to be very handy for someone who wants to uh, engender a bit of disinformation to go and do a bit of spinning. Perfect. Still, some believers persist that the admission by the CIA is nothing more than their latest bit of disinformation intended to cover up the truth about Area 51. Why do they keep Area 51 a secret? Because they feel if they deny it enough, 
people will believe them and say it doesn't exist. It's the worst kept secret in the history of, of the United States government. And until they open the facility up to the media, the mystique will still stay there and people will still be wondering what's really at Area 51. Even now, the secrecy that surrounds Area 51 makes it difficult to separate fact from fiction. Well, the reasons why the government keeps Area 51 secret is something of a mystery to somebody like me. Um, I suppose from their perspective, you could say that so much secret stuff has been going on there for so long, it's very difficult for them to come out and say, we were lying. There is a base there. It's been there for ages. And by the way, there's an awful lot of secret technology stuff going on there too. Once you start to unravel that onion, who knows how many layers further you have to go. So 